Today I'm going to show you how to make the most delicious fluffy sourdough pretzels. Salty, slightly tangy, soft on the inside, and with that signature brown crust that you know and love. Hi, I'm Suna, and I'm a food geek. Today I'm going to show you how you can make sourdough pretzels at home. How to make the dough, how to shape it, and how to get that signature pretzel crust. The dough that we're using is an enriched dough. It's not crazy like a brioche, but it has just a bit of butter for that wonderful smell. If you're new to this channel, I bake a lot of sourdough bread and I make delicious food from all over the world. I'm on a quest to get the most out of every ingredient, and my goal is to teach you how to do that in simple and understandable steps. So join me by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any future videos. The hydration of the dough sits at about 55%, so it's quite stiff. If you have a very powerful mixer, you can mix it using your machine, although I'd recommend that you knead it by hand. For the signature crust, you're going to need a chemical called sodium hydroxide, or caustic soda. It's an alkaline that is used to change the outside of the dough. The corrosive nature of the caustic soda causes the starches on the outside of the dough to gel, giving it its very brown and shiny look. Some people say that you can use a solution of baking soda in water. I will test how that works during the baking of this recipe. I've linked the appropriate food safe versions of sodium hydroxide in the description. When using lye to bake, you should be very careful as it's highly alkaline. Wear protective gloves uh, and glasses so you don't get hurt. When it comes to the baked goods, it will dissipate in the oven. So none of the corrosive chemical is left, so don't be scared uh, about the food safety. This is how pretzel were made in Germany since the 1800s. These were the words, this is the recipe. The written recipe, the ingredients, and the amounts are linked in the card above. First, we build the levain. To a container, add 33 grams of mature sourdough starter. Sixty-six grams of water. Sixty-six grams of bread flour. Mix well until completely combined. Put an elastic band around the container so you can monitor the growth. Cover and let it ferment somewhere warm until it peaks. Then at this time, we might as well autolase the flour. To a bowl, add 685 grams of bread flour. 15 grams of salt. Three hundred and thirty five grams of water. Mix it until it comes together. Then dump it out onto your kitchen counter and knead it until all the flour is combined into the dough. Form a boule and put the dough back in the bowl and cover it with a damp dish towel until the levain is ready. About half an hour before the levain is ready, take 75 grams of butter out of the fridge and cube it. Leave it on the counter until it's needed. 
When the levain is ready, remove the dough from the bowl and add the levain on top. Knead the levain into the dough. It takes about five to six minutes. Leave it to rest for 30 minutes, cover it with a damp dish towel. Then it's time to add the butter into the dough. Mmm, butter. Press the dough out into a disc, add butter on top and fold the dough over. Once there's no more room for butter, isn't there always room for butter? Knead until the butter is incorporated into the dough. Keep going until all the butter is kneaded into the dough. All this mixing and kneading can be done on a machine if you want to spare your hands and arms. Personally, I like to get the workout. Form a bowl and put the dough to rest in the bowl for another 30 minutes. Then it's time to divide the dough and pre-shape it. Divide the dough into 12 equally sized pieces, around 100 grams each. Pre-shape each dough piece into a small ball by first creating tension on top. then rolling the ball on the unfloured counter. Keep the dough under the damp dish towel so it doesn't dry out. This is a pretty dry dough. Pre-shape all the dough pieces and let them rest under the cloth for 30 minutes. Then it's time to shape the pretzels. To shape the pretzel, take a ball and roll it out into a long strand. The middle should be thicker than the ends. It should be about one meter long, about three feet, four inches. Lift up the ends and cross them away from you. Then twist them one more time and flip them back down onto the pretzel. Arrange the arms to each side and then put them onto a baking sheet with parchment paper. You'll need two sheets with six pretzels on each. Then form the rest of the pretzels.
Cover them with a damp dish towel and let them proof until they're visibly grown. About two hours or more, depending on the strength of your starter and the ambient temperature. Once they're done proofing, put the sheets into the freezer for 30 minutes to firm up the dough. You can also put them in the fridge if you don't have room in the freezer. Now's a good time to heat your oven to 230 degrees Celsius, about 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the 30 minutes are up, put on your safety gear, glasses and gloves. Pour one liter or four and a quarter cup of water into a bowl. Add 30 grams of food grade lye. Mix the lye into the water using a wooden spoon. Grab the sheets from the freezer. We don't want them to be frozen solid. Put the pretzel into the lye bath for about 30 seconds each. I can fit two at a time in my bowl. Once it's had its bath, put it back on the parchment. While they're still wet, sprinkle them with coarse salt. I'm using molten. Be careful not to put too much salt on them. It just doesn't taste good. Once they're salted, put a long score in each pretzel in the thick part. As you can see, I'm not really being uh, careful enough about my score, so they're not deep enough on all of the pretzels. Also, uh, I obviously only divided my dough into 10 pretzels, but it should have been 12. You can make them whatever number of pretzels you want. It's all about what size you want. Once you finish the first batch, put them in the oven and bake for 10 minutes. Then turn down the oven to 220 degrees Celsius, about 425 degrees Fahrenheit and turn the sheet 180 degrees. Bake for another eight to 12 minutes until they're deeply caramelized and baked through. While the first batch is baking, prepare the second batch, dip, salt, and score. The last pretzel here I'm dipping in a solution of 1000 grams of water and 100 grams of baking soda, which should work perfectly for pretzels, um, but we'll see. Already now, I can tell a difference in the color of the dough. The ones that were dipped in lye are much more yellow. Interesting. Bake the second batch as it did the first. Remember to reheat the oven to 230C, 450F. Dispose of the lye bath by pouring it into the toilet and flushing.
And these are the finished pretzels. Look at the baking soda one, it just doesn't look right. But do you know what looks right? <laughs> B-roll. Hey Josh. Don't they just look amazing? I love pretzels. I've been baking them for years, but I had always been making them using yeast. So I decided to convert them to using a sourdough starter for this video. I hope you learned something today. See you next time. Cool.